As you can see, there are very large crowds on hand around the Fort Des Moines there, but you can also see that there are some protest signs. There's one which reads, the only good communist is a dead one. And the D is uh, just a little bit out of place in the middle there, isn't it? Uh, a rather hasty job, perhaps, of sign making, but a demonstration that there are those who are protesting. Uh, certainly, those folks who are on the circular ramp, uh, which you have been watching from the position of uh, 9th and Walnut, uh, certainly those folks uh, have an excellent view up there, and uh, uh, we consider them to be pretty lucky because uh, there had been some talk in advance that uh, security regulations might not allow the general public or even news photographers to take up a position there along the ramp. However, as you can see, it's, it's crowded to capacity, except, I believe, for the top level. Oh, yes, even up there, there are some people, apparently a limited number there. And if we can, uh, we'll try now to take a look at the position at 14th and Locust, where we hope to be able to see something of the crowd waiting at about the midway point on the uh, cavalcades route from the Fleur Drive and McKinley down to downtown Des Moines, where he will disembark at the Fort Des Moines Hotel. For the moment, we're continuing to view that scene, as we have said, in the vicinity of the Fort Des Moines Hotel. And notice that in the Plymouth building there, right across the street from the Fort Des Moines Hotel, uh, a great many people's business offices are places where not much business is being transacted this afternoon. They are uh, filled to capacity every window on the side which command a view of the entrance to the Fort Des Moines with interested persons. We were told uh, from our reporter on the scene at the Fort Des Moines a short time ago that for a time at least, the police endeavored to persuade those who were farther uh, back uh, from the scene with signs to stay back and for those who were closer up to join them also. But uh, at the present time, it appeared to us from our view of the Fort Des Moines that some of those protest signs were rather close to the scene. Again at the airport, taking a look at uh, some of the people who are uh, waiting and uh, they have been waiting, many of them, since uh, 9 or 10 o'clock this morning, at least, to get their uh, motion pictures and their still pictures of the arrival of the Russian premier. Uh, it was a matter of great interest to most of us who are uh, newsmen to uh, see this large uh, commercial jet plane arrive uh, about uh, an hour ago, uh, and uh, from it debouching uh, 125 or more news people, all of whom had made the flight from San Francisco. They report to us that uh, Premier Khrushchev certainly was in brighter mood when he left San Francisco than he was when he left Los Angeles, California. As most of you are well aware by now, there was a great deal of concern on the part of State Department people that uh, Khrushchev had gotten so angry at some of the exchanges in Los Angeles that uh, he might actually make good his threat that he was going to leave and to go home. But uh, in San Francisco, he has been able to mingle with the public more generally than was the case anywhere else along the tour so far. And uh, in addition to that, uh, he apparently, by consensus from every newsman I've talked to who has been on the whole tour, got the warmest welcome in San Francisco that he received any place along the route. And this seems to have encouraged him a great deal and to have made him pretty happy. Here we are inside the Fort Des Moines Hotel. You notice that magazine there bearing the uh, letters USSR? That, of course, is the official English language magazine published in Russia under an exchange agreement which allowed it to be sold in this country in return for the sale of uh, uh, some American magazines inside Soviet Russia. The other one was a magazine which uh, outlines uh, some of the history and background, some of the facts about the man who's going to arrive here at the Des Moines airport very shortly. Once again, we're watching some people getting out at the Fort Des Moines Hotel. Uh, very frankly, uh, nobody can tell from this particular uh, point uh, whether these are members of the Russian party or not, but I suspect it may very well be the case that they are. Just about uh, 15 minutes, I would guess, before we took the air with this telecast, uh, the last plane which uh, landed here, the most recent jet plane, arrived with uh, a large number of members of the Russian party of a somewhat uh, secondary uh, rank. And now we are seeing on our television view the plane bearing Russian Premier Khrushchev himself. He is arriving in a Boeing 707, which has been, of course, in the air from San Francisco for a matter of something uh, more than uh, two hours now. and. 
it makes a beautiful sight in the air as have all these other jets as they approach the Des Moines airport. An excellent shot here. You can see that 707, which is not yet down, as it goes into its landing pattern and as preparations now very rapidly move forward uh, to have the official welcome as soon as that plane touches the ground. It's quite an impressive sight to watch these uh, jets as they come in. Uh, we have seen now uh, three of them uh, prior to Khrushchev's. And uh, believe me, when, when they hit the concrete, they hit it hard. There is a tremendous scorching of the wheels and uh, a flare of uh, blue smoke uh, as uh, the rubber is burned off as those wheels make contact. And then the nose wheel slowly settling down gives you another and smaller burst of uh, blue smoke before the great plane rolls on and from our vantage point disappears for a moment before it again turns around, taxis back and takes up its position. This is Khrushchev's plane that we have just been watching uh, entering into its landing pattern and which very shortly is going to be coming into our view as it makes a landing here at the Des Moines Municipal Airport. Expectancy is gathering by the moment. The uh, military police are standing uh, ready for action all around the fringes. The newsmen, and I would hate to arrive at an exact count or attempt to, but I would suppose that certainly there must be uh, 500 newsmen gathered right here on the edge in front of our mobile unit from which our television cameras are operating. And they're all waving at each other, uh, making sure their cameras are ready to operate, uh, watching the uh, uh, play of the various security guards as they begin to take up new position. And we are now about to get a good look at Premier Khrushchev's plane as it comes in from the north, having uh, passed over a part of the city of Des Moines as it made its big circular approach to the Des Moines airport. And he is very low to the ground. However, you're going to be able to see him right over the farm buildings that are visible here at the present time, right over a white house, which is directly across from the Des Moines airport. And you are now seeing that giant plane with a plume of uh, jet fuel smoke emerging from its engines, slowly settling down. It is going probably to pass behind the house in your view for just a moment. There it is. And it's now very, very close to the runway itself. We here can listen to the whistle of those giant motors. The plane has just set down. And it is bouncing a little bit. We won't give him too many points for that landing. We saw a couple of better ones earlier, to be right honest. Now the nose wheel is down. Russian Premier Khrushchev has arrived in Des Moines and in the state of Iowa. It'll be a little while before we get a look at him because those planes roll a long way before they come to a halt. And you have heard the roar of the engines as they attempt to slow down the progress of that roll. Uh, very shortly, however, it will have run out its course. It will have turned around. Uh, we will hear the roar of the engines as it taxis slowly uh, toward the position where the official party of greeters, Governor Loveless, Lieutenant Governor McManus, Mayor Isles, the President of the Chamber of Commerce, Frank DePute, and John Adams, the Executive Secretary of the Des Moines Chamber of Commerce, are waiting to greet him. Those who have been in the news party uh, waiting for the arrival of Khrushchev, who actually flew here ahead of him, as I've explained in the press planes, which always precede the arrival of a VIP in uh, this sort of a tour of the country, uh, tell us that uh, while Khrushchev is more happy than he was when he left Los Angeles, that uh, they have marked him as a man who uh, doesn't attempt to conceal his emotions many times and uh, is pretty impetuous and uh, that uh, they believe on balance at the present moment that uh, not too much has happened on the tour which uh, greatly enhances the prospect of uh, some major agreement coming out of his talks with President Eisenhower at Camp David, Maryland at the end of the tour. I talked briefly with John Scully, the diplomatic reporter of the Associated Press who arrived on this plane, and uh, he expressed his belief that uh, uh, nobody among the American public would be wise to expect really sensational developments out of the conference between Eisenhower and Khrushchev at Camp David. Now that big plane is coming in. You can see it beautifully turning around. There is a line marked on the airport runway here where the plane is supposed to stop. And uh, as you can hear our directors, probably in the background, urging our cameramen to get uh, still better shots, perhaps you can even hear in the background the roar of the plane's motors 
as that giant 707 jet turns around and begins to take up the position from which it will shortly be disembarking the official Russian party. <laughs> 